Hello, today we're going over section 3.6, which is interpreting the discriminant. So if the zeros of a quadratic equation are the values of a variable that make the equation equal to zero. Another name for zeros is roots. Now a quadratic function can have zero, one, or two roots. So we have three cases of roots, which I just mentioned. We have two real and distinct roots. So that's where we have two different answers for X value. So for example, if we have X squared plus seven X plus 10 equals zero, if we factor that, we get X plus five times X plus two equals zero. So we'd have X is equal to negative five and negative two. So we have two unique answers for X. So that's two real and distinct roots. We also have a situation where we have two roots, but they are the same for equal roots. So in reality, it's one root. So if I factored X squared plus six, X plus nine, that gives me X plus three times X plus three. So because the binomials are identical, we're just going to have one root. So in this case, it'd be X is equal to negative three. And we have a situation where you have no root. So for example, trying to solve this with the square root principle, I'd move the one to the other side. So I've got X squared is equal to negative one, go to take the square root. And we have no solution because we can't take the square root of a negative. Hence why this one has no roots. Now with our quadratic formula, X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. The value inside our square root is known as a discriminant. So that means that this here is our discriminant and can tell us how many roots an equation has. If a value in here is greater than zero, then we have two distinct roots. Because if this value is larger than zero, we're adding and subtracting something. So once again, when B squared minus four C is greater than zero, we have two roots. If it equals zero, then we've got plus or minus the square root of zero. So we're not really adding or subtracting anything. So therefore we actually only have one root. Now, if our value of B squared minus four AC is less than zero, then we're trying to take the square root of a negative. So that would be no roots or no solution. Okay, so without solving, determine the number of roots. So for this one, my A would be one, my B is equal to negative one my C is equal to negative five. So we have B squared minus four AC. We'll substitute what we have in. So we have negative one squared minus four times one times our C value of negative five. So negative one squared is one. Then we have negative four times one is negative four times negative five makes that positive 20. So we have 21. Now 21 is greater than zero. So we have two roots. Next, we have six X squared plus five. So we have an A value that is six. We don't have a middle term, so our B value is zero. Our C value is five. Once again, B squared minus four AC. 
So our B value is zero. So we've got zero squared minus four times our A value of six times our C value of five. So that is equal to negative 120. So because this is negative, so less than zero, we have no roots. Okay, so practice for this section starts on page 251. 